Hello, my name is Eugene Yashin. I am the Chief Investment Officer of Equities with uh, Signet Financial Management. And I would like to uh, present today to you uh, the update on the stock market. Please take a moment to uh, read through our disclaimers and disclosures. Um, so today we will uh, overview, we will have a quick overview of the U.S. equities. I will talk uh, about size and style dynamics in the marketplace. I will also cover the uh, multi-factor macro model we have and related sector uh, ratings update. Uh, we will also take a look at the micro factors uh, we look at and work with and uh, the GARP uh, framework, uh, which is uh, actually becoming more and more dominant in the marketplace as well. Uh, we will also take a look at what worked and what didn't work in our portfolios, equity portfolios, and uh, I will uh, describe the changes which we recently made to our strategic all equity and strategic dividend equity portfolios. So uh, while the August and early September was pretty quiet with regards to economic uh, updates, um, politics and the geopolitical situation obviously filled in the, vo the void. Um, on top of this, the weather is not uh, treating us well, and our praise goes to all the victims of uh, Hurricane uh, Harvey. Um, but what we do believe in is that in the long run, the fundamentals will prevail. And um, the fundamentals look actually pretty good. Uh, we see improving earnings, uh, very healthy corporate profits. We see accelerating global growth. And uh, the monetary policies throughout the world uh, remain pretty supportive. When we look at the uh, style dynamics, on this chart we look at the 12-month trailing uh, return difference between the value and the growth camps of the marketplace. Uh, when the graph is above the red line, the value prevails. When the graph is below, growth is more dominant. As you can see, we were this year so far entering the growth territory with little tilt towards value, uh, but we still see the, in the intermediate term uh, growth prevailing. Um, and this kind of coincides with the classic economic theory of growth uh, doing better in the second phase of the economic expansion. With regards to size, uh, last year small cap was uh, pretty dominant. This year, uh, large cap has been outperforming, uh, but on, on a three-year moving average, we still see the trend in the uh, mid to long term moving towards small cap. In the meantime, as I said, on a monthly basis, we obviously see uh, a large cap prevailing. Uh, what we do expect to happen if there is any chance of a tax reform uh, getting passed through Congress and signed by President, uh, the tax reform should boost the small caps. We also, in our analysis, look at the whole bunch of macro uh, factors. The two uh, very important uh, ones are the credit spreads and the yield curve slope. Uh, the credit spreads have been uh, at the historic lows, and uh, the yield curve was pretty flat uh, recently, and we believe the yield curve is flat uh, a little bit artificially because the Federal Reserve started increasing uh, short-term interest rates, but the long-term interest rates uh, do not move um, uh, due to the disbelief uh, within the marketplace uh, with regards to a quick economic expansion. The market believes the economic growth is going to stay uh, pretty slow. When we look at the whole bunch of macro factors which form 
uh, our macroeconomic uh, proprietary forecast, uh, we see that uh, those favor pretty cyclical industries and sectors these days. So um, we see industrials, materials, technology, real estate, utilities, and telecom uh, forecasted to outperform over the next 12 months, with energy and financials being pretty neutral, and consumers and healthcare uh, uh, looked upon a little bit negatively. Now, this chart shows actually the forecast dynamics, how the forecast has been changing over the last 12 months. You can see that consumers are pretty stable uh, with regards to underweight uh, rating. Uh, financials are kind of iffy with energy. Uh, real estate, industrial, technology to some extent, the pockets of technology. And materials uh, are much more prominent uh, and uh, uh, favor uh, looked upon favorably. Um, so those areas we tend to overemphasize in our portfolios. So overall, we favor the stocks with growth at re reasonable price characteristics, meaning those which have uh, good value, but also pretty good growth dynamics. Um, we see some actually pockets of value in um, the uh, uh, sectors like financial, uh, where we believe market uh, is undervaluing too much the uh, the prospects uh, for the sector. Uh, the overall earnings are very healthy and they keep uh, going up. So uh, we have our hopes here. We still don't see the uh, growing and the wages and uh, the tight labor market uh, creeping in too much into the earnings. And the overall, as I mentioned before, acceleration of the global economy is present, uh, and emerging economies, developed economies, are uh, growing at a higher rate uh, than in the recent years. When we look at the factors on the micro level, uh, we have about 3,200 stocks in our universe, um, so we can kind of uh, have a good feel with regards to which factors outperform uh, and underperform uh, throughout the time frame. So this you can see the uh, most prominent factors, momentum and growth, earnings consistency, intrinsic valuation, value and momentum, and our proprietary long-term score. So when they have a green color, it means they uh, outperform. And when they're red, it means they underperform. And they're different, obviously, flavors of strength, of outperformance or underperformance. As you can see, most of the momentum growth, earnings consistency, and uh, value and momentum uh, tend to underperform right after a recession. Um, and the intrinsic value actually is uh, the strongest right after the recession. And that was a great recession of 2008 and the beginning of 2009. So you can see that all these factors don't work. And why? Coming into recession. And during the recession, most of these factors actually do work. The answer is that during the recession, a lot of really uh, what I call garbage stocks tend to get so depressed and sold off that right after the recession is over, they tend to fly and outperform uh, better and higher quality companies for a short time frame. But then for a very long sell, so we have risk off, uh, risk on environment right after the recession. And then for a long time, usually we have uh, a risk okay environment. I call this risk okay environment because we uh, tend to find ourselves after the recession and the, they bounce back into a longer phase of economic expansion, slower expansion, not uh, the you know quick expansion or bounce back right after the recession. So uh, what we see, oops, sorry, what we see recently 
uh, we kind of have our doubts with regard to whether we just had at the beginning of 2016, the end of 2015, at the beginning of 2016, whether we just had only earnings recession, but uh, we have our suspicion that we might have actually experienced the full-blown economic recession, which was uh, not properly accounted for um, uh, by uh, government agencies. Um, and because all the macro indicators pointed out to uh, a very mild slowdown at that time, and the micro factors actually behaved the same way as they behaved after the recession in 2008 and the beginning of 2009. So hopefully we will have this period uh, of most fundamental sectors under performance followed by a period of a um, um, you know, a longer, lengthier uh, period of outperformance. So now let's uh, take a look at our, uh, you know, portfolios, our strategical equity portfolio. Um, what worked and what didn't work uh, here since the beginning of the year? The biggest contributors we find are in energy, IT, and healthcare. And uh, detractors are financials, consumer discretionary, con discretionary and consumer staples. Uh, the table below it depicts actually the results, more detailed results of uh, attribution analysis uh, we conduct on our composite benchmark. And uh, the country contributors uh, from energy, uh, for example, sector, the contribution came not by picking the good stocks, but actually underweighting the um, uh, you know the overall sector, and by picking good stocks as well. Uh, for the most part, usually again over the long of the economic cycle, we our selection effect or the effect of us picking good stocks within sectors is actually strong by this time around because our scores tend to under uh, tended to underperform um, uh, over a short period of time um, uh, recently. Uh, we had a negative selection effect, but our allocation effect was pretty positive. So we underweighted the right sectors, underperforming sectors, and we overweighted uh, the good outperforming sectors. And uh, overall, we had a slight uh, positive contribution in comparison to the benchmarks. But this was this has been a pretty challenging environment for a lot of active managers, no doubt about that. So the more detailed uh, changes in the portfolio, we are moving towards mid-cap, kind of a compromise between going all, uh, you know, full-blown large cap and we see because we still see small caps and mid caps having best GARP characteristics, and we believe that we're moving towards the GARP uh, environment. That's why uh, we tend to stay kind of neutral and overemphasize me medium companies without overcommitting to large caps or small caps. With regards to the sectors, again, we overweight information technology and the software side of IT, which is uh, more of a, a characteristic uh, of a second phase of economic expansion. Uh, we like industrials and we like materials. So what we sold out of the portfolio are the consumers, Dollar General and Kroger. Those are the victims, obviously, of the Amazon of Amazon moving into the uh, retail uh, and grocery world. Uh, we sold H-Band and Trims Aetna. Uh, we bought into Facebook and Oracle, increasing our software posture, and uh, we also extended Ryman Hospitality Reads, uh, bought Ryman Hospitality Reads um, uh, Expanding our REIT presence. As you can see, our strategical equity portfolio is still pretty heavily uh, weighted in uh, information technology. Uh, we are slightly overweight in financials. We are overweight in industrial, slightly overweight in healthcare. 
and we underweight staples, uh, energy, and consumer discretionary. Our strategic dividend portfolio is designed to produce uh, dividend yield uh, essentially higher than the average, you know, stock market. So with that goal in mind and that primary goal for the portfolio, we keep our large cap posture, we stay the course of value-oriented portfolio, and we overweight uh, industrials and materials um, uh, to, to be in line with our macro view uh, of the world at this juncture. So what we sold in our strategic dividend portfolio are New Star, Green Hill, H-Band, and uh, ETR. Um, kind of slowly, slowly reducing, you know, utility presence, but still keeping a pretty healthy overweight. Uh, uh, rotating financials a little bit and uh, trimming um, um, uh, down, you know, not trimming down, actually keeping the energy sector uh, in play but uh, rotating out of a, a poorly fundamentally uh, positioned new star. So what we bought is, again, Ryman uh, Real Estate uh, REIT, Ryman Hospitality REIT. Alliance Bernstein, uh, Manulife, those two are the financials, and uh, British Petroleum, a substitute for New Star in energy sector. So our strategic dividend portfolio is more, much more value oriented. So no uh, wonder that uh, that financials uh, occupy the top spot in the portfolio. Uh, we overweight uh, uh, industrials still. Uh, we have actually pretty healthy presence in energy, in uh, materials, and utilities, and telecom. Um, but again, this portfolio is designed more to produce dividend yield. Uh, this concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me at eyashin at signetfinancial.com. Have a great day and uh, stay out of those hurricanes.